Hello everyone on Women Dialogues and I'm your host Chachi with all of you again to create more voice for women by women and today's our guest joining us from Switzerland Ms Bonnie Fatih her name is enough to tell how much work she has done for women living and creating feminine leadership so welcome Ms Bonnie on Women Dialogues Thank you so much, Ashley. I am absolutely delighted to be here, and especially as a means to support you in this effort. I just think it's wonderful what you have undertaken to highlight women. I don't think there are enough people doing that, so I salute you and celebrate you. Oh, thank you, thank you. Those are really encouraging and motivating words for me, and same time. I I thank you for being with us today. Uh so let's start before starting about your the position and the way today you are. Let's start knowing about you as your early childhood and your early life. How was it? Oh, you know, I'm one of these people who had a happy childhood. I grew up in a loving family um with certain code of ethics. with the understanding that you showed up um we didn't use words like ethically or correctly and all that but there was a certain code of ethics you knew what was expected of you and as a result you showed up in that fashion my my father was actually um a methodist minister which meant that we lived in a goldfish bowl everybody knew who we were So even though we tried to be bad sometimes it was difficult. And all that being said, a couple things I think are really important to mention because they're they have carried me through life. Mhm. One is we had a very I had a very modest um upbringing. Um the riches were not part Mm-hmm. of of our uh, the upbringing as far as finances were concerned we never went hungry we always had full tummies of very very good food mm-hmm. at the same time there was never this feeling of um needing mm-hmm. and i i always felt i was living in a world of abundance and i mm-hmm. still feel that way today it's it's wonderful mm-hmm. and there was a real value of education both of my parents had gone to university my father had a phd mhm they had traveled mm-hmm. and so there was there was also an expectation already as a child that mm-hmm. yes i would get higher education mhm and that plus this loving family i mean i have cousins i still see today we have reunions I believe that that more than anything else has been important and with this kind of underlying spirituality this knowing that it doesn't all depend on me there is for me anyway there's some kind of a higher being and I believe that's extremely important in who I am mm-hmm. and you add to that the people who were so um loving and supportive of me You know when I was 10 years old my nickname was Tutan. Uh, that gives you an idea of the fact that I was pretty sturdy and I loved that name. Oh. It didn't bother me in the least. Wow. And I believe it was because I had an uncle mm-hmm. who referred to me as his little Marilyn Monroe. Mm-hmm. Evan knows the only thing I had in common with her was blonde hair. mind be natural <laughs> but the fact that somebody treated me like i was special mm-hmm. and i had a father who at that time told me mm-hmm. when you walk through a room walk mm-hmm. tall mm-hmm. because when you walk through a room everybody's going to look at you mm-hmm. because you're beautiful mm-hmm. and no matter what i truly looked like on the outside I felt because of these two men I felt beautiful on the inside mm-hmm. and that gave me a confidence mm-hmm. and and I believe that's very important and I'm going to come back to uh, just the uh, 
fact, I'm giving you these incidents as we go through because they, they do have an impact. Yeah. And then, yes, um, we moved every four years. Mm. We got run out of town at least once mm -hmm. because my father always believed in doing what was right. Mm. And we lived in Milwaukee, Wisconsin in the 50s. And my father brought blacks into the church. Mm. And at that time, this was not something you did. Mm. And he was told not to do it, but of course he did it anyway. Mm -hmm. And so we moved on to a new town. <laughs> and nobody felt, I mean, certainly I was, I was fairly young at the time, so it didn't maybe influence me as much as my older sister. Mm -hmm. But all this to say that um, happy upbringing, functional family, full of love, mm -hmm. and certain values that were never questioned. Yeah. Um, if we stood, if, if my father stood up for something, the whole family was behind him. Yeah. And looking back, I think it was right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, as you said, it's it's true, so true. And the way you are such a strong woman who are dedicated and inspiring when many women around the world and our, even I'd say around the globe. And when you are sharing this small story about bringing, you know, black women in the church, I think this those kind of incident maybe, as you mentioned, not directly impacted you, but maybe in subconsciously give you your own voice and being authentic leadership the way you are today and I, I can totally can relate that way and can feel by your voice by your work and that's commendable uh, amazing work so uh, when we are talking about your leadership qualities and all so I would like to mention and bring it on this platform that you are founder of inspired women lead and many other organizations so uh, tell us uh, how it all started like uh, you you belong from very good family and you said you was uh, having very abundance of sources and you were never feel that way but how it made you connect to do that particular kind of work do you know it's it's a very interesting question and I'm in the process of, of writing a book people have asked mm -hmm. me to do about mm -hmm. um, where inspired women lead came from and it's very interesting because it's taking me back through my life to those moments where when they happen, we don't realize the importance of it. Um, and what I've mentioned only men till now, and I want you to know that I had a very outstanding mother. My mother was a writer. She, she wrote articles for magazines while being, you know, the minister's wife, um, doing all the cooking, the cleaning, yeah. and she managed to go to work. Mm. When we went, um, I think it was when my older sister began university. My mother used that as her leverage <laughs> to be able to go to work and begin teaching, which she loved. Yeah. And she went on to publish seven books also. Oh, and my grandmothers, both of my grandmothers were exceptional women truly exceptional. And all of that I feel is important to mention because they were real role models for me mm -hmm. and helping me to know that women can do mm -hmm. um, what we want to, yeah. which isn't given to too many people to, to be brought up with that belief at the time I was being brought up because there's a generation difference here <laughs> with you. Yeah. Yes, definitely. definitely. <laughs> Um, I'd, I'd like to share two, two incidents mm -hmm. um, that I think are, are very, very key to this. One was when I was 16, and I had the opportunity to hear Martin Luther King speak. And this was at Pitt Stadium in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. You know, he was like this dot at the end of the field. Mm -hmm. However, I was there in this ambiance where one, it was my first experience in being a minority. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And that was just a beautiful experience because it was a very, a very welcoming atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And secondly, I yeah. walked away from that speech and I cannot tell you what he said, but I can tell you, I get all choked. I do, I get all ch ch uh, choked up even today. I walked away from that mm. knowing that he had been speaking to me. And as far as I was concerned, he was only speaking to me, this 16 year old. Mm -hmm. And what I knew at the end of that talk was I was meant to do something special. Yeah. Now, I was one of what, 40,000 people? Yeah. Um, but I was truly touched by that. And another incident, uh, somewhat the same, the same year, we were on vacation. Mm -hmm. And I met somebody that I just spent one afternoon with. Mm -hmm. But this was, this was um, the first time that I would say um, a man that I could res truly respect mm -hmm. sat with me under a tree and asked me questions mm -hmm. where I had to use my mind. I wasn't just this beautiful young woman, yeah. which... Unfortunately, we often were at that point in time. Mm -hmm. And he was asking me questions like, what, what was my dream for my life? What was it that I really wanted to, to, to be a part of? Yeah. And that combined with Martin Luther King's speech mm -hmm. left a lasting impression. Yeah. And I mentioned that also because I want you to just hang on to these little incidents that are happening as we go along. Yeah. And throughout, throughout my life, I'm one of four girls. Um, I have three sisters. I'm sure that has some kind of an influence. But throughout my life, I realized looking back, mm -hmm. much of what I've done, certainly as an adult, and although I was uh, born in the U.S. and went to school in the U.S., I actually have lived in Switzerland um, mm -hmm. oh, more than two-thirds of my life. Mm -hmm. So um, Geneva, Switzerland is now my home. And I say it's really a land of opportunity because it's a small town, mm -hmm. and yet it's, it, it, the whole world is here. You get to meet people and, and do things you wouldn't possibly be able to do in, in other places. Yeah. And when I arrived here, mm -hmm. one, I'm, you can't tell this looking here, but I'm quite tall. I'm almost six foot, which mm -hmm. at the time was very tall for a woman. Mm -hmm. And secondly, speaking French, even today, mm -hmm. I have this astounding American accent. <laughs> so I was easy for people to remember yeah. And I think this is important because visibility, uh -huh. having people remember you when you are showing yeah. up and leading in a way that's meaningful to you, yeah. visibility is important. Mm -hmm. And one of, after having had my, my own businesses and such, I became um, president of an organization here, which was at that time the American Women's Club of Geneva, which was an organization, still is an organization, open to all women from all nationalities. Mm -hmm. And being the president of that organization at that particular point in time, we were 1,400 members, yeah. gave me tremendous visibility. Uh, visibility in the international um community here and we have you know the working body of the United Nations is in Geneva with the World Health Organization, uh, yeah. World uh, Labor Organization and so on and so being in a visible position mm -hmm. opened all kinds of other opportunities mm -hmm. to work with a high commissioner for refugees to, to, to help break through the glass ceiling, at least crack it a bit, for women working at the United Nations, because we discovered that the glass ceiling was because they did not have equal access to training that would help them move into the professional positions. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, even running, running um, 
workshops for women on career planning. Yeah. And much of what I did, even when I, with one of my other businesses, which was around motivation, mm -hmm. I discovered really women mm -hmm. just, I don't, there, there's something about women. Maybe it's because their ego isn't out there that you want to help them more. You want to see them succeed. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the work that I did was with women mm -hmm. and I had just a tremendous opportunity. I've had many, I mean, just, just two of them, which was to be on the international board of ECLOF. Now ECLOF is the, actually it stands for Ecumenical Loan Fund, mm -hmm. Church Loan Fund. It was the forerunner of all microcredit. Mm -hmm one of the best kept secrets. Uh, it was started apparently just after World War II mm -hmm. to actually help the churches mm -hmm. um, restore. And then when they paid back, because it, it's credit, it's not yeah. you know, right. a grant. Yeah. And when they paid back, mm -hmm. you know, the question was, well, what do we do? There are other parts of the world. Let's do something greater. Let's do something better. Right. And so they started funding mm -hmm small projects in other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. And when I came on board, yeah. they had let, they had put the first woman on the board, I think maybe three years before. Mm -hmm. And so part of the thrust then became, let's invest in women's projects. Let's make at least 50% of all credit go yeah. to women. And- That's beautiful, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm so enthusiastic. I don't give you a chance to ask a question. No, 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 no. That, that, that's, that's really fascinating. And I, I love hearing like the way you mentioned about the when you became the first in the leadership position in particular organization. And they, they thought about it to give 50% for the women. And uh, following the timeline, as, as we know, as you mentioned, like we are uh, having two generations are here, but if I bring that parameter of bringing that level of thinking, bringing that kind of work for uh, equality, bringing 50%. Uh, so that approach is, is having tremendous, uh, you know, component itself. You know, something very interesting, um, there are two, uh, she is, what we discovered was women had trouble getting their own bank accounts. Mm -hmm. And when they did get the bank account in the beginning, mm -hmm. they would put their money in. And when they went to get it, it wasn't there anymore because the husband had access to it oh. due to, to, the, to the laws of the different countries. And I have to mm -hmm. say here in Switzerland, when I opened my first bank account, mm -hmm. my husband had to be there to countersign. When I opened, uh, you know, when I opened my first business here, mm -hmm. the last step was for him to give me his permission. Oh. Fortunately, I married the right man. <laughs> yeah, um, that's, that so, is a beautiful thing, but it's still while well, you are sharing it, it is, it is uh, definitely informative and uh, kind of thing which I wasn't aware actually. Uh, so tell us uh, how, uh, this your microcredit uh, giving to the women, empowering indirectly by giving this finances and same time going through yourself in this process, how, how it went all through. What I found truly exciting was, you know, I say women are the backbone of the world. They truly are. In the case of the banks, the women eventually set up their own bank. Mm. So the men had no access to it. The women pay back their loans mm. much better than men. And part of that is because they, they realize the value that that is going to bring to the next person. Mm -hmm. So, and if, if I could, it, oh, one, just let me share maybe just one of the, the multitude yeah. of experiences yeah, I please. had because I was so privileged Chashi, no, I got to attend one of the regional workshops, which happened to be in Kenya. 
Mm-hmm. And so I had the opportunity to visit Uganda and Kenya, visiting the projects. Mm-hmm. And this was before we had GPS. This was before we had mobile phones. I cannot tell you today where I was at some of those projects, and it doesn't matter. But what was so beautiful mm-hmm. was, and I'll take one simple example. Mm -hmm. There was one day that we arrived where there was a project with the women Mm -hmm. and Ekloth and the Heifer Project had worked together. And so each of eight women had received a cow. Now, you and I think of a cow and we think of milk. Yeah. When they think of a cow, they think of a calf. They think of milk, butter, most important, they think of education for their children. Mm-hmm. They, it means so much more that, than we can imagine. And so we arrived at this place. We were in the, an old school bus, mm-hmm. traveling, dirt coming through the floor. I mean, a group of us, I think we were five, started out with these eight women. Others were looking at, a, at another project. And as we lost sight of the bus, Mm -hmm. the other four people dropped Mm -hmm. off. They said, no, no, we don't know where we're going. We do kind of, we don't know these women, you know. I kept going because there was no doubt. I mean, these women had such pride in their faces. Mm -hmm. You knew, well, to make a long story short, I had my picture taken with eight cows. I didn't, I didn't have it taken with, you know, their families or their gardens. I had, I have pictures of me with cows. Mm -hmm. And these women were so proud. We did not speak a common language. Mm -hmm. Everything was through sign language. Mm -hmm. I, I, I met their children, often could see a man kind of peeking through a window somewhere. Mm -hmm. But they were the leader. They were the person who was saving the situation. And what those cows meant, well, it it was difficult for me in the beginning because I kind of was looked at as the the white goddess, you know, the rich one who paid for cows, which obviously I am not. And at the end of this, night had settled in. Mm. There was no moon yet. And Mm. We couldn't see a thing. Right. Those women, however, mm. knew exactly where to go. And as we went through the brush, all of a sudden I'd have somebody go like this to my head, and I'd know there must be a branch coming across. Somebody would lift my leg because there was a root. Mm. I didn't see a thing, but I knew mm-hmm. I, was, I was loved and cared for. I had not the slightest doubt in the world. And I mentioned this story because I think sometimes we need those experiences Mm -hmm. to realize just how equal we are, how dependent we are on each other. Because when we got back to the rest of the group, Mm -hmm. we didn't speak the same language, but we were sisters. Yeah. I I still get choked up because I still know I have these women who have marked my life and marked the lives of everybody I touch simply because of the experience they offered to me. Yeah. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, this is definitely inspiring and same time. Uh, It makes quite a lot sense because when you are mentioning the way, uh, I'm just imagining like the way I was in totally in imagining the way you maybe you was young and you was walking down and having that sense and that kind of uh, safety and having sisterhood feeling and they are marking your path even though you are unaware of that geography that language but you were speaking and they were speaking the same body language we all require whether we have different culture, language and all, but the kind of importance they made in particular situation and time in your life is remarkable. Mm -hmm. It takes us from our heads down into our hearts. 
Yes. And that's where we connect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that the same way as when you're talking about it from, it connects from our head to heart. I would like to bring about your work. So when you are doing, you know, this making uh, women globally, you know, you are giving a lot of training and giving them the sense of being their feminine leadership qualities, giving them the sense of being what they are, what they have. So what are the most important points about this feminine leadership? You, find? you know, to, to me, first of all, I truly believe that our world is crying out for women to lead as mm -hmm. authentic feminine leaders. Too long yeah. we've had to try to, you know, fit into this um, mailbox, <laughs> this mm -hmm. model, which due to the fact it's been men leading is a male model. Mm -hmm. And what the world really needs is for women to show up as their authentic feminine selves, as a yeah. compliment to men. And I hope yeah. there are men tuned into this because we need you. We're not trying to replace you. What we want is to be able to work together with the masculine and the feminine, because we both have masculine energy and feminine energy. But the idea here is to be able to show up as who we are without pretense of, you know, having to lower our voice and wear a certain outfit and talk a certain way, but just mm. show up and and, it, and it, to be able to lead with our values, to be able to lead with our heart as well as our mind, yeah. because we have very sharp minds. It's mm -hmm. not to drop the mind just for the heart. Mm -hmm. And I think that is absolutely key. And with that, you know, we're seeing, we now have, I believe, 24 world leaders that are women, prime ministers, presidents of their country, and we're beginning to see that there is a new form of leadership. And it's, 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 it's more holistic. It's more, um, I hate to say genuine. And yet, I believe there is that authenticity, which comes with showing up as your unique self. Yeah. It's, it, it's, it's bringing what you have to bring, being able to hear what others have to bring and helping yeah. them show up as their best selves. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's, as, as women, since we do see a more holistic yeah. picture, it's really important for us to also mm -hmm. listen to our own dreams, mm -hmm. to be able to actually allow our dream to surface and crystallize so that we can act on it. You know, what is, what is your vision? And Inspired Women Lead, every woman who is accepted to the program yeah. is accepted in part because she has a vision. She has a yeah. dream. She has something she, she wants to make happen that will benefit her neighborhood or her community or, or the world. Yeah. Um, and, and it's each individual. Yeah that makes the difference. So I think it, actually, you know, there, there are three messages I would love to share. One is know that you're meant to lead and you're meant to lead as your authentic feminine self. Mm -hmm. And I'm hearing men say they would also like to lead, lead more authentically. And we will be giving them permission as we show up in that way. And the second is yes, Listen to your own heart and mind. Mm -hmm. what, what is this dream? What is this vision? Mm -hmm. And how can you begin to act on it? Yeah. You know, they say if you change the street you live on, you change your own doorstep, mm -hmm. you're changing the world. Yes. And then the third that I wanted to, to be able to, to share is that you are already changing the world. I mean, each and every one of us is. I share just a few of the people who have touched my life. Yeah. They don't even know probably the effect that they've had on it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how many other hundreds, maybe thousands 
could be added to that list. And I think it's important to note that each of us, yeah. just through the way we're showing up, setting a, an example for others in the way yeah. we speak, maybe the way we walk down the street, right. is inspiring somebody else to want to do something differently, act differently, think differently. And that's, that's so having true. an impact on the world. Yes, absolutely. And I, I think that's so true because as you said, we consciously or subconsciously, we don't know how many of life are impacting our own life, but same time, how many uh, other life we are impacting as well. And I think in the same way, like having on this platform, by listening to you, while creating more voices, uh, we don't know how many of other lives are going to inspire from you, how many of other lives are going to get some of their own vision and further their life. So that's a beautiful way to, I think, uh, bring that how we create our own life, but at the same time, how we in, get impact and uh, impact others as well. And here, when you are talking about this feminine leadership, it is very strong. And I feel like the way you explain, like the male, it doesn't mean the male doesn't want, but same time, uh, we, we, I think, not uh, individually you or me, but in general, the whole society, the whole world, we made them to push, I think, the moreover to become this masculine leadership, to be like, uh, to have certain way, like this body language, this way. But everyone wants to be have authentic way of their own way. Here, when you are talking about this heart and, uh, sorry, this uh, mind and heart connection, right? So that everyone wants and bringing this feminine leadership and we have now uh, globally, um, so many female leaders, I think it is like we are creating a new form of leadership, uh, not only for female, but this feminine leadership, bringing that aspect in the leadership. It is beautiful. Beautiful, Bonnie, that you bring this point on this platform. It is so important and it is very beautiful. I love that. I love that way, the way you explain. So uh, tell us what way do you think our audience or our viewers who are listening and watching you can get benefit by connecting with you or your organization. If suppose they would like to get these leadership kind of qualities and they feel like, yes, we have that in our life, but we, we don't know. They don't know that path, how they can get it. Uh, so tell how they can uh, look for that. First of all, I would like to once again, just celebrate you because you are making yes. a difference through what you are doing and, right and, this you know, minute. So, sorry to interrupt you, but I would like to say it is re uh, reminding me and bringing me back three years back when we got connected and I joined with you. And because I was same like, you know, many others, I want to do this, I want to do this, but how? So the, that is why I feel like I want to hear from you. I want to make the audience and viewers to hear from you that how you are changing people's lives. So please share it. I, I love to hear and I would love to people to know about that, yes. Thank you, thank you for giving me this opportunity because at one, I'm not changing lives. The vision and the women who come on board are changing lives because Inspired Women Lead, and I think it's important to say, was founded on a vision. And that vision is a world of peace, understanding and collaboration where each individual is valued and respected for her or his uniqueness. And also the belief of Bonifacio, the founder, <laughs> And for this to happen, we must have women leading at all levels of society and around the globe. And Inspired Women Lead is a 12-month program. It is free, but it comes with a real commitment. And the woman who comes on board, who has some kind of a dream, a, a vision, something she knows she's meant to, she's meant to be making happen in some way, shape, or form. When, when she comes on board, without going into too much detail, 
she is mentored by a woman who is as different from her as possible. That woman will be living in another country, will be living in a different culture, will be working in a different sector, hopefully will even be a different generation, be younger, be older. And this is done purposely because when we work with somebody who is so different from us, mm -hmm. it brings into play one of the strongest values behind Inspired Women Lead, which is unconditional acceptance. Mm -hmm. Because we learned to unconditionally accept the other person for who she is, which is what helps this authentic leadership blossom. And so she meets with her mentor during the first six months, twice a month for two, uh, um, twice a month for 45 minutes. And there is obviously a robust program behind it. It's not just chatty. It's it really, there is a program. And once a month, she's going to be on a call with women from around the world, the other mentees, yeah. And we'll have an opportunity to discuss and learn from the other women around a facilitated discussion of the topic, yeah. the theme of that month. And then the second six months, because once again, it's 12 months, yeah. the, you who were a mentee the first six months, you yeah. become the mentor for yet yeah. again, another woman from another country, culture, and sector. Mm -hmm. And this is where the real growth takes place. Because as you, as you know, if you want to assimilate something, yeah. give it to somebody else, teach it to somebody else. And so during the second six months, mm -hmm. you become a mentor and you also have a group call. And that group call is your mentor training. You are trained one month at a time. Yeah. And then afterwards, there is an alumna pro <laughs> program. So then you're able to tie in with women who have gone before and come after. Yeah. And for the women who want to continue to mentor, uh, that also is a possibility. So it's, it, 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 it's not one person doing anything. I mean, we have a, a council and, and I do it like this because we don't have you know a hierarchy. It's yeah. an association. We mm -hmm. all own it equally. Yes. And yes. it's it, it, the women, the, the women, we've, we've had refugees, we have women working in the slums, we have a movie producer, corporate women, um, women who are working in artificial intelligence, wow. we have teachers, we have yeah. artists, we have musicians, we have, it, it really is with the idea that yes. each individual has something so special to share. Yeah. That's beautiful, uh, Bonnie, the way you explain and the way you share that how uh, people can look forward to get their this uh, leadership program and how they can look forward to connect with you. And thanks a lot for sharing all with me and with our audience today. It was great learning and I'm so grateful for it. Thank you, thanks a lot. But oh, thank, thank you, Shashi. Once again, you are making a difference. And I am just so happy to be here to support you and to encourage you and uh, for the pure pleasure of being with you and being interviewed with you. <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Thank you. You are so uh, nice. And I, I really get, I really meant to be that way you are inspiring uh, those lives. And it is remarkable. It is remarkable. It, there's no doubt about that. But before finishing, I would like to ask, why do you think a platform like this, Women Dialogue, is needed? I think it's needed for several reasons. One, I mentioned visibility before. I think it is so important for us to have the opportunity to be visible and to use our voice, giving our own unique Mm -hmm. message mm -hmm. um, and and in a what I would call a safe and secure it's almost like our, our mentoring um, environment here one feels very safe and secure uh, you don't feel that you're going to be attacked by the interviewer and it's such a beautiful way to support women 
to give women the voice to to show other uh, other women out there you know each of us has a different story yeah. and no matter how we tell that story mm-hmm. chances are there's something in that story of each of the women who comes on here that each of us i can identify with and yeah. helps us to see ah yes if she can do this i bet i can too so that there is a different um a, a, a different perspective as a result of the women you are interviewing. And, and don't overlook just having you um, in front of us here too uh, is very important because you're also saying to, to women, you know, here I am, I've, I have this special program um, and I'm not, ex- you know, I'm not any more special than Bonnie or the, or, or Saskia or some of the other people I've, I've, <laughs> I've interviewed. We're just all peers. We're all, we're all sisters. And I think that's such an important message. And once again, thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you, Bonnie. And that your message is so powerful and your uh, feelings are so strong. And I think it makes us connect, even though we are sitting different parts of the world, different time zones, but it doesn't make us in different thought and different feelings. We connect uh, spontaneously the way you explain. So once again, thank you so much, Bonnie. And last thing I would like to ask, what one message would you like to give to our viewers? Just do it. Just step forward, use your voice, and realize you have something very special to give. And if you need help, bonnie.fascio at gmail.com will do it. And you're, you're welcome to also go to Inspired Women Lead. Yeah. Please don't, don't sit back, step forward, use your voice. One thing maybe I should say is, there are two courses I never did well with. One was home ec, catastrophe, mm-hmm. which was home economics, you know, how to keep house and such, which mm-hmm. they taught when I was young. The second was speech. Speech class, when I had a, when I had a speech to give, mm-hmm. I just didn't go to class. Mm-hmm. And today, you can't shut me up. <laughs> so there's hope. <laughs> There's hope. <laughs> yeah, I think that's that's beautiful way to explain your message, the way you explain. <laughs> it is so good. This is so nice. Once again, thank you, Bodhi, with this uh, laughing movement, inspiring and motivating movement. I would like to just once again say thank you. I'm so grateful for uh, having you today on this platform. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks to all viewers and our audience. If you would like to hear more women voice and part of women dialogues, please connect with us. And if you would like to see uh, and check out with Boni's work, check her details in the description below as well. Thank you. See you in the next episode. Bye-bye.